I'm Patrick Walsh. Uh, I'm the team leader uh, for the Virginia Tech Hybrid Electric Vehicle Team. And uh, one of the more important areas uh, that we've been researching in the EcoCar competition uh, in order to get a running vehicle is hardware in the loop, or HIL. Last year, during year one of the competition, the team chose to use Natural Instruments hardware and software for our control code development. In the car, we'll be using a compact Rio as our hybrid vehicle supervisory controller, but prior to implementation, we'll be using a PXI chassis with a real-time target for modeling and testing. Our controller hardware in the loop setup uses a vehicle model running in real time on our Natural Instruments PXI chassis, and that is interfaced with our Compact Rio, which is running our control code. Our control code is only interfaced with the PXI chassis through two CAN connections and analog signals. With this setup, our control strategy does not know whether it's talking to the actual vehicle or to the vehicle model. Some other equipment in our HIL setup includes the actual accelerator pedal our vehicle will be using. On the PXI chassis, we have several cards, including a relay card for automated fault insertion, a power supply to provide the baseline voltage for analog signals, and a DAC card to allow for digital and analog inputs into the PXI chassis. Finally, we have a laptop which runs NI Veristan and LabVIEW in order to monitor the control code and the vehicle model. The Veristan workspace gives us information about what's currently happening with the model as well as controls to allow us to manipulate and drive the model. So as you can see here, the workspace is giving us readouts such as engine speed, a vehicle speed trace, transmission gear, and also the battery state of charge. Using the controls on the Veristan workspace, I'm going to go ahead and start driving the model and interacting with it just as a regular driver would. So first I'll start by turning the key state to on, shifting the transmission into drive, and lifting my foot off the brake pedal. You can see that the vehicle begins to creep just like a regular vehicle would. You'll also notice that we're driving using the rear traction motor since the battery state of charge is currently high enough. If I give it some accelerator input, you can see it begins to accelerate more sharply. If I release the accelerator pedal, you'll notice that a smaller amount of regen braking comes in to simulate the feel of engine compression braking. If I lower the battery state of charge, you can see that below a certain level, the controller brings in the engine to allow us to continue driving using the flex fuel engine. Two ways we can use this controller HIL setup for fault insertion would be fault insertion via hardware and fault insertion via software. An example of fault insertion via hardware would be to physically pull signals from the controller to ensure it takes appropriate action. Currently we're driving using the rear traction motor in electric vehicle mode as you can see when we press the accelerator pedal. If we pull the cable that allows CAN communication with the rear traction motor, you can see that the controller will immediately bring the engine on to allow us to continue driving safely using the flex fuel engine. For fault insertion via software, Veristan allows us to create stimulus profiles to simulate faults. For example, in this stimulus profile, the battery state of charge will ramp from 30% to 10%. During this, we'll see that the vehicle will transition from charge depleting mode to charge sustaining mode, as well as open the contactor when a lower critical state of charge is met. Before we deploy the model, we can open the System Explorer window in order to map imports and outports of the model to CAN messages and digital and analog signals, as well as create custom devices in LabVIEW to expand the functionality of Veristan. For example, our power supply is controlled by a custom device. Finally, we can create stimulus that incorporates stimulus profiles and the relay card in order to create an automated test procedure. The team is currently working on an automated test procedure to create a robust control code. Now that we've finished testing our controller and verified that it's functionally safe, we're ready to take it and put it into the car. We feel that our modeling loop is an accurate representation of our vehicle since it runs in real time. Therefore, we can take our controller from our real time modeling loop, unplug it, and plug it into the car and expect similar results. One of the main benefits of that versus just plugging the controller into the car is that we've already done our safety testing on the controller beforehand, so we feel that it is safe to install in the car and interact with all of our components that we have added. What we've managed to do with EcoCar is mimic the entire OEM vehicle development process. For years we've been doing it on the mechanical side with computer automated design, and now HIL is a final piece of that development puzzle. 
hardware in the loop is letting the students do advanced rapid control prototyping techniques well before they even get to the vehicle. This around the clock testing makes their vehicle control a lot safer while also giving them a platform to do off-board system optimization. Training students in these industry standard methods creates engineering graduates that hit the ground running when they get into the workforce.